Welcome into another edition of Conversations with Paul Brown. Today we are in the library at Wren High School, and, <laughs> and our guest is Tamara Cox. She was just recently named one of five finalists for Teacher of the Year for South Carolina. At what point coming along did you make the decision, this is what I want to do for an occupation? Well, it was kind of a windy road. <laughs> I wasn't sure for a long time. Uh, my bachelor's is in sociology. And then after college, I worked for a program called Upward Bound that was at Clemson University for first-generation college students. Yeah. And then I worked at the Governor's School for the Arts in Greenville. And I just enjoyed working with the teenagers so much that I thought I should try teaching. So I got my Master's of Arts in Teaching from Converse College and started, um, I did my student teaching. And even after that, I wasn't so sure if it was for me. Um, I'm kind of small and I'm soft-spoken. And so uh, controlling 30 kids in a room was a, definitely a skill I had to learn. <laughs> and so I was a little bit discouraged for a while. I worked in business for a couple of years. And then my husband uh, came home from a deployment in Iraq. And I thought, well, if I'm gonna give teaching a try, Family life stable, let, let's give it a try. And so I um, applied at Palmetto Middle School, my own middle school, and uh, got the position there and started teaching seventh grade social studies. After a couple of years teaching social studies, I was looking for a bigger challenge. And so I got my library science degree from USC and moved from the classroom to the library at Palmetto Middle. Um, there was a little detour where I worked in technology at the district office. Uh, when we um, purchased iPads for our students and was involved in that deployment, which I learned a lot from, but I just missed the library. So when uh, we had a retirement in the district at Wren High School, and it just worked out perfect for me to get back in the library and work directly with the kids again. Was there ever any thought going through your mind as you continued your your um, uh, vocation that you might leave Anderson County or you kind of determined that this was home and you wanted to stay here? Well, there is something special about teaching in the community where you grew up. And the teachers gave me so much encouragement and love and really pushed me to do my very best. And even though we didn't have a lot of money as a kid, they, I was always encouraged by them to shoot for the stars. I want to be there to do the same for kids that live here now. Um, we're a small community, close-knit community. The parents really are, care about the school and support the schools. And I've been to a lot of schools across the state. I've traveled the world, and there's just no place like home. Usually when people think of library, they think of books. And that's definitely still a very important part of what I do, is promote reading and um, organize reading programs and connect with our English teachers. Part of information now is not just books, it's online, it's social media, and the kids need those skills, so that's also where we fit in to try to help them navigate all the information that's coming at them in the world as it is now. And also a very important part for librarians is collaborating with our teachers. So I do a lot of lessons with all, you know, lots of different subjects all through the school. So. Every day is a little bit different, which is really fun. Makes it the best job, I think, in the school. Everybody now has an issued iPad. How has that impacted the learning process? Um, well, the information's at their fingertips. So we can really focus more on the content instead of just the process of getting the information, which used to slow research processes down. At the high school, we have Chromebooks, so they can get online, access videos, articles, anything that they need to research. Um, they're able to assign work digitally, complete it on the device, and then submit it back to the teacher digitally. And it's great that we have a school district that's invested in that because then our students, when they graduate, are ready for the workforce, which expects you to already know how to do all those things. So for me, it's like it just kind of integrates in what we're already teaching and just kind of like 
gives it a little boost. Can anybody write a letter anymore in high school? Yes, and we actually have a lot of teachers that require them to do that. Is this affecting how they interact socially from your perspective as a librarian and as a teacher? Oh, they're doing plenty of talking, so I Are think they? it's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, th I'm, at, you know, I'm kind of glad I didn't have that when I was in high school, because it does sometimes take that stress home with you. When it, when I was younger, you could just go home and kind of forget whatever problems were going on at school. But a lot of parents are very involved and they uh, monitor what their children are doing, which is a wonderful thing to do um, to make sure that they're using it in a wise way. We are at Wren High School in the library and our guest this week is Tamara Cox. She is a finalist for South Carolina Teacher of the Year. She's the librarian here at Wren, and we'll continue our conversation with her. In your role as librarian, and by the way, you have been here how many years now as librarian? This is my second year at Wren High, but my 14th year teaching in Anderson 1. And coming to Wren was a big deal? Yeah, it was exciting. Yeah, my mom is not too thrilled that I'm wearing blue and gold now instead of, from coming, <laughs> instead of red and gray. <laughs> coming from Palmetto. Yes. Part of what you've been able to carve out for yourself is an ability to deal with lawmakers and, and people that are kind of controlling the purse strings with regards to education, not mm -hmm. only in Anderson County, but in South Carolina. How did that come about? I'm a member of the South Carolina Association of School Librarians, and one of our committees is a legislative committee. And I became the legislative chair for that organization, and we visit Washington, D.C. every year for National Library Legislative Day to talk about school and public library funding. And then uh, we also have a South Carolina Legislative Day where we um, talk about library funding on the state level. So that's how I got started with it. Um, and then for our district, the district teacher of the year is in charge of our, all of our school teachers of the year. So uh, we organize activities. And one of the things that we did this year was we went to Columbia to meet with legislators and talk about funding for public education. We're lucky in that some of our legislators attend a public school and even have family members that are teachers in public school. So that is that always gives you that immediate connection with them and they understand the weight of being a teacher and the after school work and all of the things that we deal with um, every day. Uh, some of them probably do not. Maybe they never attended public school, their children didn't go to public school, and they definitely have never taught public school. <laughs> so that's why I think it's important for us to make sure that we share what it's really like and what we need from them and how their decisions on the policy level affect our day-to-day -day ability to serve our students. There's been a lot of talk in Columbia recently about the education reform bill, getting teachers more money, um, as a result of going down there, are you encouraged that some things are going to be done in Columbia that are going to translate to our teachers back home getting some real help? We spoke with Senator Gambrell, and he sat with us for an hour and a half, which is amazing. I know their schedule is so packed, so we were very grateful for that. And then we also were able to meet with our area's newest representative, West Cox, and um, Representative Jay West came out and spoke with us. His wife was a teacher. Right. I feel like there's a misconception that unless there is a state law telling us to test students that we don't assess them. <laughs> but that is part of what we learn how to do in our education program and we do that regularly and frequently and we use that information to adjust how we're teaching the kids. So we don't have to be told to test our students. We already assess them in many ways. So for me, the over-testing is a concern because so much of school seems to be this high, focus on the high stakes mm -hmm. standardized test. I mean, a child is not a product. There's, they could have a bad day. They have lots of things going on at home. Uh, you know, it's just a very multi-layered. So one day of standardized testing is not a good indicator of how that child is progressing. I also feel like if they haven't been in the school lately, they may not know the challenges that we face with mental health issues, trauma, 
they have not fully funded education regularly in many, many years, and that does impact us with the amount of staff that we have. Um, like, for example, I'm the only librarian that serves almost 1,200 students, um, which in the past there were multiple staff members in the library. So we, we try to spend our money as wisely as we can, but we need them to support us with actually fully funding the school at the levels that they set for themselves. <laughs> So with our number of students, there should be two librarians and an assistant. So you're doing the job of three people. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and some days I feel it. <laughs> but I mean, it's a great school and a great district. It's just that we just don't always get the funding that we, yeah. we need for the amount of students that we have. You were recognized by your peers last year for the 2018 Librarian of the Year for South Carolina. How did that come about? So for our uh, library association, we, um, we can either self-nominate or somebody can nominate us for the School Librarian of the Year. And I was lucky enough to um, receive it this year. So we have to talk about our efforts to collaborate with our teachers, our efforts to promote reading at our school. We record a lesson and they evaluate that lesson. Uh, we give a tour, a video tour of the library so that they can see how we have our space arranged and. We talk about projects that we do with the community and how we connect with the public library and other agencies. And so it's a lot of, a lot of different levels that they're looking at to choose the best person. We lead the parade at our South Carolina read-in that we have um, in Columbia every spring. And we present at our conferences and write articles and, and just try to speak out for our group. So I learned the names really quickly of those kids that are voracious readers that just come in and read one thing after the other, asking for the next part of a series, talking to me about authors, and so you just bond with those kids over the stories or even bond with the kids that have read a book that you've already read and that you both enjoyed or you both hated or whatever it is. So you just, um, to me, books and stories is just the perfect way to connect with kids and get to know them. And every year you have those type students that love to read yes. still today with all the electronic yes. stuff we have. Yes, and honestly, like you hear things online about people reading more ebooks and not the print book, but the kids, they much prefer print. Um, a lot of times if we're, we're run out of one, I'll say, well, I have the ebook version. Oh, no, no, I'll wait till I get the print book. For those that may not be aware of how the process works for Teacher of the Year, of which you are one of five finalists in South Carolina, give them an overview of how that process works. Okay. So it begins with the school level Teacher of the Year, and that's voted on by your peers, the other teachers in the building. And then our school Teachers of the Year, all 14 in Anderson 1, can, will complete an application and submit that to the district office. Those applications are read and scored. We have a top three, and then our winner is announced at our district assembly when we uh, return for the next school year. The school district one teacher of the year yes. came from the 14th. Right. Okay. Yes, so then we have our dis district teachers of the year. So there's 85 or so districts in the state. All 85 of them will submit their application the state agencies review those and they're scored by teachers and community members and um, past winners and then the highest scores, the five highest scores receive the top five finalists. And so now for top five, we have um, someone come in and they film a lesson that we're teaching a class. Then we have a full day of interviews and speeches in Columbia and then the a winner for the state is announced in May. As far as I know, I'm the first school librarian to ever be chosen for top five finalist, and the first from Anderson One. And the film crew for Superintendent Molly Spearman that come in and announce the winners and surprise the winners did not know exactly how to come in to the library because they've never done it before. <laughs> So they actually came to our faculty meeting right after school last Wednesday. And so I really was not expecting them to come to a faculty meeting and surprise me. They had already announced three other winners and I just, it just was not in my mind at all. 
and she came into our faculty meeting with balloons and flowers. So we received $10,000. Right now it's a giant cardboard check that my children are enjoying playing with. <laughs> when the new Teacher of the Year for South Carolina is announced, what do they get? So they'll get a total of $25,000. Um, so it would be, you know, additional 15. Um, we get to drive a BMW for a year. You go on the yes, road. Yes, so for a year, you leave your position and you travel all around the state um, doing professional development and speeches um, and visiting lots of districts to represent teachers, you know, all of the teachers for the state, which is probably the saddest part. <laughs> Um, if I were to win, that's going to be the hardest part, is to leave my kids um, at Wren. One of my library helpers said, well, that's just not going to work for me. <laughs> <laughs> so they're not excited about the potential for me leaving either. But, but it's a good opportunity, and, and it's temporary. So. Well, listen, congratulations on your <laughs> win, you. and we wish you the very best as you go to Columbia and compete for the South Carolina Teacher of the Year. Tamara Cox has been our guest. We want to thank her for taking time out of a very busy schedule to talk with us and we want to thank each of you for tuning in and invite you to be back with us next week same time for our next edition of conversations with paul brown until then take care everybody